Quetzal the Cat Who Composed by Leslie Newman, illustrated by Amy June Bates. This story is based on a true story. Moshi Cattell lived in the middle of a noisy building, in the middle of a noisy street, in the middle of a noisy city. But Moshi didn't mind. Everything he heard was music to his ears. Moshi was a composer. Every morning he composed himself by sitting very still. He listened outside himself and listened inside himself, just as his teachers had taught him when he was a little boy. When he was done listening, Moshi turned all the wonderful sounds he had heard into beautiful music. When Moshi was finished working for the day, he went out for an afternoon walk to listen to the sounds of the city. One particular day, he turned a corner and he heard a sound he had never heard on the street before. It was a small sound. It was a sad sound. It was a little Quetzal, Moshi cried. He often used Yiddish words when he was nervous or excited. Come little Quetzal, he said, scooping up the black and white kitten. I will take you home and we will make beautiful music together. The next morning, Moshi moved a stack of music books off the top of the piano and sat Quetzal down. You must listen outside yourself and inside yourself, he instructed as he began to play. Quetzal kept very still. The music started off softly and slowly, but then it grew louder and faster, reminding Quetzal of crowds of people rushing by her, almost trampling her, and she meowed in fright. Moshi stopped playing, picked up little Quetzal, and looked into her big green eyes. Ah, Quetzal, I see that music stirs your soul, he said, and that is a wonderful thing. One day, a letter from Moshi arrived in the mail. The Paris New Music Review is having a contest, Moshi read aloud to Quetzal. Each composition must be no longer than 60 seconds. Moshi blinked in disbelief. 60 seconds? Impossible! How can anyone create a beautiful composition in only 60 seconds, he asked Quetzal and put the letter aside. The next day when Moshi sat down to play, his fingers fumbled over the keys. He kept glancing at the letter from the Paris New Music Review. Finally, he decided to give it a try. He wrote a few notes and then a few more and then a few more. Before he knew it, his composition was 10 minutes long. Impossible, Moshi said. Time passed and Moshi grew more and more unhappy. One day he did not even come to the piano at all. Quetzal stared at him as he stared out the window. Quetzal didn't know if he was listening outside himself or listening inside himself. Perhaps he was not listening at all. Moshi looked at the letter announcing the contest again, and Quetzal looked at it too. She knew it was the source of all Moshi's unhappiness. Maybe if she got rid of it, Moshi would be happy again. She put one six-toed paw down on the keyboard, crept across the keys, and then pushed off the piano with all four paws and landed on the table where the letter lay. Moshi whipped around. Quetzal, that was magnificent, he cried. Moshi grabbed a pencil and jotted down exactly what he had heard. He played it several times, then turned to Quetzal. Your composition has a clear beginning, middle, and end, is full of heart, and takes exactly 21 seconds to play. Quetzal, you're a genius. Moshi folded up Quetzal's composition and wrote a note to the judges. This piano solo, piece for piano, four paws, 
was written by Quetzal Cotel. It is her first composition. She hopes you enjoy it. Then he and Quetzal walked to the corner and dropped it in the mail. Time passed and Moshi and Quetzal forgot all about the contest. Then one day another letter arrived. Dear Quetzal Cotel, we are sorry to inform you that your piano solo did not win first, second, or third place in our composition, competition. However, the judges admired your creative instinct and imagination and have decided to award you a certificate of special mention. Congratulations! Quetzal, you did it! cried Moshi cried. He lifted Quetzal in the air and the two composers danced a jig of joy all around the room. A few weeks later, Moshi brushed Quetzal's fur until it shone and put on his very best suit. Then they hailed a taxi and rode to the concert hall where Quetzal's piano solo was having its debut. Moshi carried Quetzal inside his jacket and sat down in the very last row. When the concert hall darkened, he placed Quetzal on his lap. The music began. Two whole hours went by. Finally, a young girl crossed the stage. I will now play Piece for Piano, Four Pauls by Quetzal. Meow! The girl paused and then began again. I will now play Piece for Piano, Four Pauls by Quetzal. Meow! Quetzal meowed again at the sound of her name. As the audience laughed, the house manager flicked on the lights and rushed to the stage. Is there a cat in the theater, he demanded? That is not allowed. Please leave immediately. But this is Quetzal Cotel, the cat who composed Piece for Piano for Pauls, Moshi said, holding up Quetzal for all to see. A cat who composes? Ridiculous! Ludicrous! Preposterous! Impossible! The judges were called to the stage to confer. There is no rule saying that a cat cannot compose, the head judge announced. Therefore, we invite Quetzal, he paused as she meowed again, to please stay as we all enjoy her prize-winning composition. The young pianist took her place, with arms stiff and hands held straight over the keys. She leaned forward, pausing for a minute, like a cat getting ready to pounce. Then she played Quetzal's piece. Encore! Encore! the audience cried. The girl played Quetzal's composition again, and when she was done, Moshi brought Quetzal up to the stage so that the composer and musician could each take a bow. After the concert, Quetzal became very famous. Her picture appeared in many newspapers, and her composition was performed all over the world. And one day, another envelope addressed to Quetzal Cotel arrived. It contained a royalty check for $19.72. At the bank, a teller pulled out a stamp pad and Quetzal pressed her front paw into the ink and then placed it on the back of the check, endorsing it with her six-toed signature. The bank teller counted out Quetzal's money. It bought Quetzal many cans of cat food, which she thoroughly enjoyed.